Welcome to the Mercer County Football Show presented by St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Alongside the Trentonians, George O'Gorman, I'm Sean Lerman. And we are now going into the third week of Mercer County playoff football. We had one Mercer County team eliminated this past week. We had two teams moving on. We'll start with that game that was on the WBCB Sports Network. Trenton Central fell to South Brunswick 33 to nothing. And it was uh, it was close for a half. South Brunswick up 7 nothing, but Trenton just had no offense. Couldn't generate any offense. And uh, South Brunswick had some big weapons, as you remember, John. And, uh, you know, Dante Strickland, uh, you know, he... he didn't dominate the game as much as a lot of people thought he was probably going to do, but uh, he was definitely a, a major factor, including the hit he had on uh, Kenyon Tootle, right. the wide receiver. Uh, I guess it was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit, and that kind of knocked Tootle out and uh, caused a uh, quite a ruckus on the field. And I know you were... Uh, you said probably the best hit of the game by Trenton was when Coach Tariq Coleman ran across the field and tackled one of his players who was... Uh, participating in that uh, skirmish, and uh, Trenton really didn't do anything offensively. I think uh, Andrew Holt, their, uh, their key running back, their 1,000-yard uh, rusher, I think he may have only had like 30 yards, and Trenton just really didn't do anything at all in that game. And, you know, I mean, to, to the, for the Tornadoes' credit, hey, they got a big win the week before over Montgomery, their first uh, road playoff win since the, uh, I think, 90, 1993, uh, they really haven't been a major playoff power. But uh, the tornado season ended, and it was a good season because uh, they had a lot of young kids. And, of course, the Allentown Redbirds handled uh, Central Regional rather convincingly as uh, Michael Curry again ran for over uh, 100 yards and threw for over 100 yards on if there was any any doubt that he was the player of the year in the uh, Colonial Valley Conference, I mean, he solidified it there. And Allentown moves on the weekend of, uh, I think it's December the 6th, is that the Saturday? I believe so. They played down at uh, Rowan University in the South Jersey Group 3 championship game against Delcy. And uh, a lot of people had forecast they would be Allentown against Delcy. Allentown, of course, is new to a lot of the South Jersey people, being that they were always a Central Jersey team until this year. But uh, interesting that uh, I guess it's for the fifth straight year now that, uh, or at least the fourth straight year, that the Mercer County team has, is playing for the championship. You go back to Steiner playing up at Rutgers a few years ago against Neptune. Then you had the year after that, you had Nottingham winning the championship against Neptune at the College of New Jersey. Of course, last year, Hopewell and Lawrence, and now Allentown. So that's, that's quite uh, an impressive resume for Mercer County teams that really haven't been considered, you know, a, uh, a dominant force or at least a contending team teams in the state playoffs. I remember years ago when they said, hey, Mercer County teams are terrible when it comes to the playoffs. Well, they've kind of changed that opinion a little bit in recent years. Yeah, it's definitely going back the other direction a bit. The other team moving on uh, in South Jersey Group 5, Rancocas Valley, defeated Williamstown 42-32 to in that game, so they continue their season with a win. Yeah. Um, well, I know that you mentioned Rancocas Valley a lot. I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I know you're not the biggest fan of I'm the, not the, the biggest fan. I'm not the biggest fan of the coaching staff. Uh, I don't like the things that Rancocas Valley does, but at any rate, they're, uh, and being they're outside of Mercer County, right? you know, uh, and they don't even play in, in our league other than in the worst Jersey football league. So, uh, I'm not a big fan of Rancocas Valley. Uh, I thought that they would, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that they, uh, you know, they waited eight games. Right, to, to play a home game. To play a home game and then end up losing two. Right. And then they finally got that road win. And then last week, of course, they defeat Williamstown. So going back to Trenton a little bit, their season's over, 7-4, and four, their final record. Uh, but this is a young team, and I think as we look ahead, forecast next year a little bit, I, I expect that they'll be right in the thick of things once again. They have some major graduation losses, and until a week ago, the Trenton program had listed Andrew Holt as a senior, or excuse me, as a junior. But he's actually a senior. And I said to Tariq, I said, well, you know, you'll have him back. He said, no, he's a senior. I said, well, your program said, he said, don't worry <laughs> about our program. Our program is 
probably the most ridiculous program that I've ever seen put out. I mean, there's no consistency to it other than I think they list them by the year, but the year is like in the fifth column. So it's really tough to try. And, and you know yourself, John, trying to find, you know, uh, information on a particular player. you got to hunt all over that, that roster. It can be a little tough. Yeah, it is tough. But, um, well, so at any rate, we only have the one game left with a Colonial Valley Conference team, and that'll be in two weeks. Now we've got the most traditional day of the high school football season, Thanksgiving Day. And uh, the numbers have dropped off there. We've still got the most traditional game in Mercer County, which is uh, Hamilton Steiner. And that game will be played Thursday morning over at Steiner. And uh, although the Spartans have had a bad season and Hamilton is, uh, you know, got to the playoffs, you know, kudos to uh, Tom Hoagland and his staff for getting to the playoffs after a terrible, I think, 1-5 and five start or 1-4 and four start. But they got there. And uh, heavy underdog when they went up to play against, uh, they played against Carteret, I believe that's mm -hmm. who Hamilton played, and they got handled rather convincingly. But hey, you know, you always want to make the playoffs, and, and the Hornets did that. And I think that the Hornets would probably be a favorite to beat Steiner on Thanksgiving. Hopefully they'll play the game, I mean, with a forecast for snow coming in tomorrow. And uh, who knows, you know, if they'll have the field cleared by then. I remember one time about 20 years ago when they did have they did postpone the game because they got a a huge snowstorm on Thanksgiving Day and they postponed it till the following Saturday. But uh, that's the most traditional game, and then we've got another game that's kind of new. I think it's only the second year that Allen, excuse me, that Lawrence and Hopewell Valley will be playing on Turkey Day. Of course, they were supposed to meet last year, but the game got postponed because they were both meeting the following week for the Central Jersey Group Three Championship. So those are the only two games uh, involving Mercer County teams on Thanksgiving. There are a few others. Uh, you know, for a couple of years we had Nottingham and Notre Dame playing on Black Friday. And then uh, Nottingham decided they didn't want to do that anymore, so this year they played a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Notre Dame was able to pull out the win and get to, uh, I guess the Irish finished 4-6, and six, which wasn't bad for no, where, where, bad. They, where they had started. And... Um, you know, we've got some interesting traditional Thanksgiving games, uh, you know, right outside the area. You've got Bordentown in New Egypt, which has uh, always been an, uh, a, a very competitive game. You've got some of the oldest Thanksgiving Day rivalries are still being played. You've got Burlington City and Palmyra play, Florence and Riverside play. In fact, this may be the first time I think that uh, Riverside will go into the game favored and uh, probably you know, beat Florence for about the first time in 20 years. You've got, uh, you know, a couple of other big, you know, interesting matchups. Uh, I think, is Northern Burlington playing Pemberton this week? Or I don't that, know, may I be, know that may be a Thanksgiving game, too. But uh, there are some traditional games. And, of course, there's another game, South Brunswick and North Brunswick. But, uh, you know, Thanksgiving football, other than Steiner Hamilton, really isn't that big anymore in Mercer County. It never really was big. I think this will be about the 55th year that Steiner and Hamilton are playing. Well, that Steiner Hamilton game, weather permitting, it'll be on the WBCB Sports Network. You can tune in for the Trentonian pregame show at 10:15 a.m. on Thanksgiving. Great way. You got the turkey in the oven. Throw on BCB, uh, the WBCB Sports Network 107.7 The Bronx in the background. In the meantime, we're going to step aside, take a quick break. We'll talk a little bit more about that game and maybe talk a little bit about next year in Mercer County football. Right after this, this is the. The Mercer County Football Show presented by St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Discover the dealer for the people, Haldeman Ford Subaru, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. One of the region's finest state-of-the-art service facilities for all makes and models. A service facility so good, local school districts get their buses serviced at Haldeman. Police fleets, local municipalities get their cars and trucks serviced at Haldeman. From oil changes to tire sales, Haldeman Ford services all makes and models, and they offer tires for just $10 over cost on name brand tires like Goodyear and Pirelli, and their waiting room offers complimentary food, and there's a special Wi-Fi room available for your use. So no matter where you purchase your car, get it serviced at Haldeman Ford, the dealership for the people on Route 33 in Hamilton Township. Hi, Merle Reese to tell you about our good friends at the Revere Restaurante Italiano in nearby Ewing Township at 802 River Road. 
I can tell you that from South Philadelphia to New York's Mulberry Street, there's no better Italian cuisine than that served at the Revere. Start your meal with one of their great appetizers or salads. Entrees include outstanding veal dishes, fresh seafood daily, excellent steaks and chops, homemade pasta dishes, daily specials, and much more. You can also enjoy their bar area, where on most weekends, entertainment is offered. The Revere also does off-premise catering and can accommodate private parties for any affair, including business functions. Call the Revere Ristorante Italiano for more information and reservations at 609-882-6365. 882-6365. The Revere Ristorante Italiano open Monday through Friday for lunch and seven days for dinner at 802 River Road, right off the Wilbertha Road exit on Route 29 in nearby Ewing Township. Jerry Blavitt here to tell you about St. Francis Medical Center, the heart hospital in the city of Trenton. St. Francis Medical Center is one of the region's top cardiac care centers, serving all of Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. Their staff of highly trained physicians provide state-of-the-art heart care to patients with cardiovascular disease and pride themselves as being the only regional heart center to offer a full spectrum of individualized services. And Consumer Report ranks St. Francis Medical Center in the top 10 hospitals in New Jersey for safety and the number one hospital in Mercer County, St. Francis Medical Center, the Heart Hospital. Don't forget if you miss any of your local high school sports action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at thetrentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's the Trentonian. Welcome back to the Mercer County Football Show presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton alongside the Trentonians, George O'Gorman. I'm Sean Lerman. And as we said before the break, we have coming up on the WBCB Sports Network, Hamilton at Steiner, Thanksgiving morning on 107.7 The Bronx, 107.7 TheBronc.com, a good one to tune into. And George, like you said, that's a historic rivalry, but Hamilton probably the favorite this year. I would think so, uh, but... Not a heavy, heavy favorite. Steinert is not that bad of a ball club. And if Kyle Muller can get some protection and is able to throw, uh, he's got a couple of receivers uh, that he can throw to. He's got Christopher, who's uh, Steve Christopher, I think his first name is. Right. He's an outstanding talent. Uh, a lot of that depends on uh, if Andrew Rubio was able to return because he's missed the last couple of games. He was like the leading rusher for the Spartans, uh, although a couple of other guys have stepped in. Uh, Morrison, uh, there's two Morrison boys, one is a senior, uh, Michael is a freshman, I believe. They've done an ex outstanding job for uh, Dan Caruso and the Spartans. And, you know, Steinert always gets up for that game. And like I said, weather permitting, I've seen that game draw as many as, you know, five, 6,000 people. It's, it's Thanksgiving games basically are homecoming games. Right, it's up. Because a lot of the graduates come home, uh, they're home, if they're in college, they're home for... Uh, have Thanksgiving dinner with the family, and while the mother's home cooking the Thanksgiving dinner, or already has it in the oven, or already has it cooked, they all head out to the uh, the big Hamilton Steiner Thanksgiving game. And you know the games are, have been very competitive over the years, especially a couple of years ago when Steiner went to the playoffs as they were getting ready to play Neptune for the championship. And uh, you know it, it's it's a competitive game, and hopefully the weather is good. Uh, you know, being that they both play on grass fields, you know, it could be sloppy, uh, like, I w like it was a couple of years ago when Hamilton knocked off the Spartans over at Steiner Stadium. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's part of the, it's as much a part of Thanksgiving in Mercer County as, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the drumsticks and the uh, stuffing and all the other stuff that goes with Thanksgiving. This is our last Mercer County football show of the season, and I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about next year. Uh, obviously, we, we've talked a lot about Trenton, how they're a young team, we have a, a handful of players coming back, but what are maybe some other teams that you think could take a step forward next year? I think a, thing that, a team that can definitely take a step forward, depending on who the coach is going to be. If Chappie Moore returns, I don't see reason why Notre Dame shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't bounce back and have another uh, outstanding year. You've got Xavier Luzinski, who's really, you know, matured into an, a great quarterback. And, of course, you've got uh, Alex Roman. I mean, he's a dominant force in the running game, and 
Chappie said after their win over St. Joe's in Metuchen a couple of weeks ago with that game that was stopped with five minutes to play after a brawl on the St. Joe's sideline, Chappie said that as good as a running back as Alex Roman is, he's probably the best linebacker he's had at Notre Dame in 10 years. And believe me, Notre Dame has had some outstanding linebackers over the years. But uh, Notre Dame's got some weapons coming back, uh, you know, all things considered. They, like I said, they got Xavier Luzinski, who's really developed into an outstanding quarterback. You got Alex Roman as a linebacker and a running back. You got Isaiah Hill, who can run the ball. And you got Jake Litka, who's a, right. a, definitely an a outstanding receiver. So Notre Dame has a lot of weapons coming back. Uh, I really don't see a lot of the other teams. Trenton should be good. Uh, they've got a good nucleus returning. I really don't see uh, any of the other teams, the uh, the Windsors, West Windsor North and West Windsor South. Uh, North is losing Kevin Murphy to quarterback, uh, That's probably their, their best that. quarterback. That's the end. Oh, Princeton should be very good. Princeton, uh, I, I, why, for some reason I keep, you know, forgetting Princeton, but the, hey, they've had an outstanding year. And I think that... Uh, Charlie Gallagher has really about it, got to get serious consideration as coach of the year to take a team that was 0-10 and, and get them to the playoffs and actually go, what was it, 8-1 during the regular season mm -hmm. and with David Beamer as the quarterback and uh, Rory Hellstrom as the running back, wide receiver. Uh, they're a team that really can develop and really be, but, you know, they can be a serious contender next year if they stay healthy like they were this year. That's Princeton, always the key. Yeah, for Princeton doesn't things. really have a lot of depth. And they were fortunate to uh, avoid many major injuries this year, and that's why Princeton had such a great year. Uh, Steiner, uh, well, they, Steiner will have Kyle Muller back as the, as the uh, quarterback, and he's you know he can throw the ball. He's a nice big talk, you know, nice big six foot two quarterback can stand in the pocket and throw the ball. Got a couple of receivers returning. Hamilton, uh, Hamilton's losing a lot. Losing Malik Sneed, the uh, probably the most versatile quarter, uh, player in Mercer County this year. But you losing Tyler Wren. Uh, they're also losing uh, Kyle Bond, the quarterback. They're all graduating. So uh, Tom Hoagland, uh, if he returns, because there's always speculation that uh, you know one of these years Tom is going to you know think about hanging it up. But I, I think he still enjoys football. He's got to be. Pretty happy with the, with the way the Hornets turned their season around. Absolutely. After uh, starting out one and five, and, uh, and I remember everybody said, "Wow, they're going to be terrible this year." They lost to Princeton. Well, you know, turn the clock ahead <laughs> right. and see what happened to Princeton this year. And so that was really no no major upset when when Hamilton went in and lost uh, to a Princeton team that was coming off an zero and ten season. Allentown, uh, hey, Jake Graber just continues to do outstanding work. Uh, Four straight years in the playoffs. Now he's in the championship game. Uh, really, he's, I mean, he's got a lot of weapons on that team. And, you know, because his offense does so well with guys like uh, Dean Apostolico and Jake DeRizzi and Jordan Winston and Michael Curry, you know, you'll kind of overshadow. It overshadows what their defense has done. But, hey, the Redbirds' defense is very good. So... There's some of the teams that I that I can see uh, really being strong this year. Lawrence will lose a lot, uh, and I, I hope Old Valley will take some major graduation losses. Guys like Michael Gus, Geis, Lorenzo Bryant. Uh, there's some of the key people for uh, you know that Hope Old Valley program that uh, they'll find hard to replace. But hey, that's uh, we got a whole season to think about, a whole winter and spring and summer to think about what the football teams are going to be like in Mercer County next year. Who knows that we were going to be able to get another team into the uh, Central Jer or South Jersey playoffs now this year. That's, uh, that's really a, uh, a credit for Mercer County football. And although Allentown technically is over the line and just outside Mercer County, you know, they're, they're part of the Colonial Valley Conference. And, uh, you know, Jay Graber has done an outstanding job. John. He has. I mean, Mercer County football is in a great place. I think we're going to see a lot of really good games next year. But we've got Mercer County basketball season starting up in just a couple of weeks. And before you know it, it'll be springtime. We'll have baseball on the air here at WBCB. But this Thursday, it's Thanksgiving on the WBCB Sports Network. Hamilton at Steiner. Trentonian pregame show at 10.15 a.m. on 107.7 The Bronx and 107.7thebronc.com. 
George, it's been a great season here with the Mercer County Football Show. It's been a pleasure to work for you after I started to fill in for Mike Sansel toward the end of the season here, but I've enjoyed doing the show, and make sure to tune in next year when we'll be doing the show all Mercer County football season here on WBCB. This is the Mercer County Football Show presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. He's George O'Gorman of the Trentonian. I'm Sean Lerman. Have a great day, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.